Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi. Alaykum as wa rahmatullahi Please forgive our ignorance kindly. Can you expand Nur Anwar wa Siddhat al Asrar and the physics of it? We really don't understand the light of every secret. Then you have to take a school class in physics. Nur al Anwar wa Siddhat al Asrar. That if you, you can even YouTube it, that what is quantum physics? When, when, when everybody said that, oh this is a, a glass, it's just a glass. And then they opened up the science of atoms and said, okay well let's look at this under a microscope. Oh they said, oh my gosh, with this glass when we look, because it's observation. Muraqaba is the same understanding as using a, a, a what is that called? It's not telescope, it's for outside. Microscope? Microscope? Microscope is muraqaba, it's being observant over something and you have electronic ability to go deeper. So science when they started to look at things they said, let's go deeper than the form. So what's holding this structure together? So then they started to understand, oh there's atoms, they called them by their inspiration atom. And that these atoms are all moving and they said, oh there must be something in the atom and they went deeper. And they began to now see all these other creation inside the atom. Then they went deeper, they found these energies and vibrations. So it means that as they were going deeper they kept finding something else causing all along it's the same glass they were looking at. So they understood that form, so you write a glass or form, then you make a line and say become atoms, then these atoms become like lights. Then these lights they look deeper into these bosoms and whatever they call these things and they say, oh these are actually energy and they found energy. Then they saw that actually this energy is how is this, they went deeper and they, they saw vibrations, what they called string theory. And they modify and they argue about different titles but this is Qur'an where Allah said that, verily everything is in a praise by me. By As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Allah's Divinely praise, everything is existing. None can hear it but the men of tafakkur. Why? Because they're from the world of light. And their whole sense and reality is to go towards the world of light, not the form. They don't care about the glass, they want to know what's keeping that glass together. So as soon as they started to understand, oh there's a light in this, there's an energy in this and there's a praise in this. Well that's the Nur al-Anwar, is that everything has a light and every light has a secret. What would be the secret? the praise. So every secret when they see a light there must be a, a praise and a hamd on that and as a result that's creating the energy that makes it now to manifest in its world of light and malakut and because the atoms are spinning creating a hologram then you see the form begin to manifest. Now science of it and there may be scientists on thing, oh it's not exactly like that, well don't lose your, your place of thought, I'm not a scientist. 
This is just the spiritual understanding and an overlay of this process. Now the exact that's you know their science and that's for them to understand. But in spiritual nutshell is that every form breaks down to a light, that light has an energy, that energy is manifesting in a praise. So they want to see the light in everything and reach to its understanding of that light and they want to go towards the praise of it so that they can understand the praise that Allah and the secret that Allah has given to that reality. As you understand that deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper then you begin to understand why Prophet's name has praise in it, hamd. Yusabbihu wa bi 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 hamdi, 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 hamdi. Why? Because hamdi is Muhammad, is Ahmad. The praise of Allah is the is the dress that given to Sayyidina Muhammad soul. As a result, Prophet's praise and all the different hams that Allah has given to Prophet is what? Making these lights to manifest. Because Allah then later teaches these awliya, if I make the praise directly and I praise onto the mountain, it will be shattered dust to clarify in their marifah. Mm, you have to just now as you're progressing into these realities, Allah's praise is way too powerful. If Allah's praise directly hits to the mountain and think about the largest mountain that, that holds the earth from oscillating, Allah's telling us it'll be in powder. So there must be a transformer for creation and all creation. And that which takes the power of Allah's Divinely Qul and brings it down so that creation can exist. And that's called Muhammadun Rasulullah in which Allah then clarifies, but when I praise upon the heart and I send that praise to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is firm and doesn't even shake because that reality was made to carry the power of Allah's praise and as a result Prophet's praise then goes out for everything else. And everything has a unique praise keeping it into its existence. So it's immense, immense reality and many have no patience to understand it and by now they're probably going crazy on the internet hearing it. But what are you talking about? What, what, what? Because it's, it's again very advanced. Most people are happy with kindergarten understanding. That's the example we gave, they're, they're looking in a prison and, and playing with shadows. And anyone who talks about the world of light to people whom are confined only to the shadows of life and looking and interpreting shadows, they're very upset with realities. But those whom Allah freed from this prison of torment and bad character and send them into the world of light, they expanded the horizon of their understanding. So imagine one who's prisoned all day long and for years is imprisoned and all they see are shadows and their understanding of shadows. It's not compared to the one who walks into the world of lights and, and the visions and horizons of the beatific heavenly kingdom. And those are the servants of Allah whom He frees, those whom He loves. When Allah loves a servant, He shows him His kingdom. That's Allah's is grant for love that here's my kingdom, these are, this, these are the beautiful things I want to show you. Once you've agreed to leave the prison and leave the, the, the badness of the prison and not be content with just beautifying your prison cell. You're, this is zendan and we are zendani, we are the people of a prison. When they want to leave the prison Allah opens for them His kingdom and shows them the kingdom. Ah, when one who is walking in God's kingdom can't come back into a prison and say, oh this is really beautiful down here. No, it's prison, it's disgusting. Allah's kingdom is something that can't be imagined. 
its knowledges are not the same. And that's why the uloom and the, the knowledge of these awliya that coming from the heart of Prophet it's not something that a prisoner can understand, inshaAllah. Makes prisoners angry. So have you seen the prison riots? Like when you go on TikTok and they get angry with us, they take the can and they hit it on their bars. The prison riots, oh, no, 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 yeah, because they're angry, why? Because you're not talking prison stuff, you're talking from the world of light and we don't understand this. And then they just you know exhibit bad character. Watch a prison movie, they, they burn their own mattress and they're stuck in their cell burning themselves. What kind of thing was that to do? And the prison riots, they're stuck in a cage, then they get angry, they start burning their own things and they forgot that they're locked in a cage, they're going to burn from what they've done. Means the characteristics they exhibit are like a prisoner's character making lots of noise and inflicting all sorts of harm but really only harming themselves. Nothing of any intelligence and good manners and that's not the way an uh, insan and, and a person of paradise would conduct themselves. That's a person like a prisoner conducts themselves and no offence to good prisoners whom are trying to serve their time and come out and serve Allah but it's an analogy for people whom use bad characteristics. And, and vile temperament to think that they are, you know, representing the heavenly kingdom, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as uh, Sayyidi, I recently got my sunnah ring and it feels like my finger is burning and feels heavy. Is this a normal reaction? <laughs> yeah, any, any complaints on, on the… <laughs> <laughs> the items you have to email Nasir in India, he handles all of our complaints. <laughs> no, but I got the same thing, as a matter of fact that was a good one, I got, we got an email that uh, um, somebody was not feeling well and they're in the hospital and supposedly spiritual, other family members felt great, they gave it to this supposable spiritual family member and immediately started to flip out, scream, yell, vomit, hit their head here, there. And they say, oh this, there must be something wrong, it's uh, absolutely not. It's actually like when you go to a doctor and you don't know that you have cancer. And the doctors start to give you a little bit of medicine and they begin to convulse and throw up and, and it's actually sort of exposing you have a much greater difficulty than you thought. Because that which is uh, of an ignorance may lie dormant within people, may you know there are devils within people that facilitate things for them and people whom think, oh this one always been spiritual and making du'as and making ta'weez and reading this and reading that. Um, but they may have been using energies that were not appropriate and, and not uh, of a heavenly nature. And many are like that, many people have opened themselves up uh, religious and non-religious to energies and beings and they don't really see so they don't know what they recited and what they took upon themselves. So when you take a this ruqya that given by big awliyaullah that you know through their connection with Prophet it's an immense cleansing. So we've described many times, it's like a police force that you put upon yourself, now everything in you they have to get out. Well, they've made themselves uh, very peacefully at home and they're not interested in getting out. So as a result there's a, a bit of a difficulty, a struggle and you know all, all sorts of reactions, adverse reactions are coming. That's exactly the power that the ta'weez has and it's showing the, the adverse reaction, showing the person is, is, is in a difficult state. And if they can patiently persevere, keep themselves in wudu, listen to the the, the zikrs, listen to the muraqabah, uh, try to do their muraqabah and that's if they're student. If they're not a student then probably not meant for them and take the ta'weez back because they don't want to do the practices to clean themselves and they'd rather go to the grave of what we started tonight with and that was the subject of tonight is that people are going to go to the grave with these things. So I get same email saying, oh we're well, seeing snakes, well that's not a good thing. So you keep the ta'weez, put your energy practices so that these snakes are repelled. 
And this is a sign from Allah because if you have a strong spiritual power and you put on something spiritual then it should have no effect. But when there's an energy that's not good that's why zahul kan, when the truth comes the falsehood by its nature has to perish and it has no firmness to stand on but there's a conflict. So that, that's one of the, the powers of these ta'weez and ta'weez in the home and we've described that before. You put one of the ta'weezes at the door and everyone comes to the door and starts making problems. Why, why is like this? Why is the shaykh's face is in this house? Why is like this? But that's exactly the power it has. That if you put a picture of a, a pop star nobody says anything to you, oh wow well, it's really nice. But as soon as you put pictures of awliya then wah, was well, was because the devils on their shoulders are going crazy. And that's, that's the power, why? Because as soon as you look into their eyes their soul is present, high, and it's right there in front of them dealing with them and whatever nefarious energies have attached themselves to people. And that's, that's you know that's the, the great uh, difficulty that has to be cleansed. And that's the same what's happening now on social media, as soon as we broadcast they're going crazy. Their energies of these people can't look into the face of those whom are reciting and those who are at the center, pictures of the shaykhs, why? Because they have energy. You know these energy from heaven the kingdom start looking into you and you've been doing all sorts of nefarious things all day long on that device. Of course you start yelling, screaming and the creature that's on your shoulder is is hitting your ears to change the channel, change it, change it, we don't want to see them. And that's the hypocrisy, you don't want to see our face but you want to look at all those things that you've been looking at for the last few hours and then telling us we are haram, the praising is haram, not all the things that they've, they've been doing and that's the, that's the danger. And that's exactly what the people are emailing, oh I did this, this happened, we did this, we had a difficulty. Yeah, you have to endure the difficulty, if you're a student keep it on and wash and keep your energy, meditate, contemplate, put the salawats on, keep your wudu on, you should be meditating and the way that we've taught the meditation and, and all of that. And as we begin to turn deeper and deeper into these darknesses people become more and more subtle and the danger is negative energies looking for an opening. If they find an opening it's coming through. So then that requires then the servant to keep themselves clean, keep themselves in, in a good condition, keep themselves strong with the practices and meditating and contemplating. If they didn't need it then they're going to need it day by day as, as the energies become more and more negative. That's why it's best to train when everything is good. But if you start emailing, oh it's urgent, it's urgent, the whole world upside down, I'm being attacked, I'm attacked, there's nothing urgent, it's just you started late, you should have started sooner. So it's not that we can reply to anyone who you know waited, procrastinated and then it became urgent for them. You have to do it while times are okay, not so difficult. But imagine you know if, if the world becomes upside down and, and explosions and difficulties and horrific events happening. That's not the time that you know you're going to be able to meditate and how to do this and how to connect and how to keep your energy, how to have the ta'weez. Those have to be done now so that you're proactive. Proactive means you take action before a calamity and difficulty. Reactive is when all hell breaks loose and now you're emailing, well I need this, I need that, I need this and then you put on the subject title of the email, urgent. It's not urgent for us. Why, why would we be urgent? You have to have done that before. So don't wait for, for difficulties and calamities and then you know make your life always based on one, one urgency to another urgency inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what's the wisdom behind envy that eats up good deeds like fire to wood? Envy that eats up because bad eyes, that <clears throat> when we envy things we're creating the, the hasad. And we said before that every characteristic has a, a fire of anger like a pilot flame. 
what you're going to throw on it of bad characteristic is going to be the, the fire that ignites you. When we have envy means we, we want what other people have, we, 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 we desirous of what we don't have and always looking to what other people have. And we have to then do our muhasaba and accounting of what role in myself do I play in this? Why is it that I want that? Why am I envying them? And uh, why don't I sort of feel content with what Allah has given to me? And then you can begin to write, what is it that you want? You want a better career, you, you want uh, different things. You have to write them, make goals to try to reach them and try to achieve what you need to achieve. But the, the concept of just being desirous of what someone else has is not good and burns the person and burns all their good deeds because then they begin to backbite and, and begin to have all sorts of sort of byproduct of bad characteristics. Anyone who wants to achieve something write it so that it manifests. Then make a goal on how to achieve that. If you want the better career then write down, I want this career and then I'm going to write the steps on how to achieve that career and then take your necessary actions. But just sitting daydreaming that it's going to happen, it doesn't and you have the power to manifest. So when you begin to write these things down, you give the coordinates to yourself that this is what we have to achieve. And the inspirations and the direction for that achievement is good as long as it's all in Allah's way because you don't want to be inspired to do something that you're going to need shaitan's assistance. So as long as it's under the, the mercy of Allah's rahmah that it increases my ibadah, increases my goodness, Ya Rabbi I'm able to, to take better care of my family and to have more time for khidmat then alhamdulillah. As salaamu alaykum, beloved Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please tell us the reality of personas that are worshipped in subcontinents who are blue in color? They're making a lot of movies of these personas as well. <laughs> the, the, these blues are the jinn, and the, the jinn you see them, they'll be blue. Some of them blue look like the, the, the flame of a fire like electricity, you know, so you see a blue color. So the reason they're painting them blue is they're signifying that they were the jinn race. And Allah addressed in Qur'an that, how many times have you made them your lords and your, your masters? You worshipped them and you were a servant to them and as a result you tried to ask favours from them. So we said, more so than ever it's on this earth now and that's all these subjects that we've brought in because the, the dajjal is a jinn and, and the power that he's going to be using upon this earth of favours and grants and, and, and prayers and everything is from the jinn powers. And he's veiling himself as, as does all this teaching. If they haven't learned it by now they veil themselves. So when people say, they're, oh the lizard people and they walk around like a lizard, no, there's actually a race of the jinn, they are actually looking like lizards. If you could see them in their true nature, they're green and has scales. And they don't show their nature because they can be killed at that state. If they be killed at that state it's finished for them. So as soon as they veil themselves you can't kill them like you can kill other things. So there's ways to go after them but they veil themselves. So 99.9% .9 of human race once something is veiled you can't swing something at it, you can't fire something at it, it's veiled. But it's a race of these creatures and these creatures enter into people and overtake their homes, their life, their wealth. Now do they do that for just a, a group of poor people? They may not use that energy for that but you can imagine they would go after, you know, very significant individuals on this earth and immediately acquire all their money, all their bank accounts, all their homes, all their corporation, everything would now be under the command of that jinn. 
and he will now invite all his other nefarious jinn into the bodies of all the other executives and people. And before you know it, they're running entire corporations and, and organizations and that's how they function. And the, the heavenly side they play by a different set of rules and uh, they wait for Allah's command and what Allah want to send them and that's why Allah has asked of them that take a path to wasul bi haqqa with to wasul bi sabr. They have more power than the jinn, they can occupy anybody and control anybody from any distance wherever they are on this earth. Allah has asked them that, don't use that, just be patient for my command on this earth. So it doesn't mean that the awliya don't have that power. Mawlana Shaykh has a talk that one wali can do everything on this earth, but because they follow a different set of rules by Allah's guidance, Prophet's command, they have to wait for the king to give a command and they act only according to the guidance from the king. But the power that Allah has given to them is no different. But because the ones whom are nefarious they'll be punished and what they're doing Allah will punish them because of what they're doing. So the system upon this earth right now is almost at 100% of a Dajjalic system, everything is controlled by them. And that becomes the great struggle. Those who want to keep their faith, keep their practices, they must have an inner guidance from Surat al-Kahf means they have to be Ashab al-Kahf. They have to go inside, they have to have trained on how to reach to their inner guidance that when fitna too much they can easily go inside and receive the guidance and the coordinates necessary for their safety and their salvation. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Thank you for your amazing guidance. Are we allowed to use Feng Shui? <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't mix anything with, with the tariqah teachings. You can read the concept of uh, Feng Shui and energy and energy flow and a lot of superstition and some energy teaching but the problem is that you don't mix it with your understandings. Otherwise in the end you don't know what you really have Then it's like cooking. You say that, I'm going to go to the Naqshbandi school and they're going to teach me this very complicated soup. You taste it, it's like amazing. It's fantastic and it has 1500 year recipe from Prophet And we try our best in life to make that exact soup, little bit here and there is going to be given because maybe some of the ingredients are not found anymore and it has an immense power and immense barakah. Now along the way imagine that you start adding something like a, a, a reddish or relish or a Tabasco into it but that wasn't in the, the ingredients. And a couple of years later somebody else adds something else and before you know it, it would have become a completely different dish within 20 years. And that's when the idolaters all went wrong. At one time they must have believed in oneness and because they had strong guides and Allah was supporting and was coming and teaching them deep realities based on oneness. When Allah began to lift that rahmah from these communities no more guides were coming and as a result unguided people started to innovate which was called the bidah. Why? They would come and say, well you know I don't maybe, maybe the guide was not really guide, maybe he was a god and saintly power, his power was so great maybe he was a god. But say, what about the other guide? Yeah he was god too. And he, he was a god and before you know it they were all on a different title and that's not true. And that's also from students that don't have their hearts open naming every title possible for shaykhs. This is like this, this is like this. You don't know the name and title of yourself, how can you give a title to somebody else? And that's misguidance. So they were doing this on mass scale and this is when Allah lifts His rahmah from the community, they're no longer given guidance. And when they don't have guidance 
misguidance begins to step in. So Nashbandiyatul Aliyah is a tap that will be open for the arrival till the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi that he holds the amanat of the trust, he holds the secret of the tariqah and its power is coming from his heart, Sahib al-Imdad, nobody else, nobody else can claim that. So as a result that tap is waiting for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi So no need to add anything into it. And then you dilute it and you contaminate it and you, you begin to confuse everything. Same with people adding things to their Islam. Well you know Shaykh, what, what, can we put a tree in our house? It's just a nice little tree on this holiday. So yeah but you know you do that for about two generations or one generation or you do it for 10 years, your children will grow up thinking, no that was a part of Islam, we did it all the time. So no you're wrong, it wasn't a part of Islam, your family was doing that. They go to other people's homes and say, hey, how come they don't have trees? And that's what Prophet was teaching, don't innovate, innovate into the religion, it'll become a part of your deen. And before you know it your home is so confusing, your children don't know what was this, what was that, say, a tree is interesting, that's nice but that's not a part of our faith. So this is our faith and this is what we have. If you'd like to see the tree, go to the mall. Then they'll always know that, no our faith doesn't have that but when we wanted to see a tree we went to them all. As soon as you put it in your home it became a part of your religion and then your children will do and your children will do and before you know it two generations down and they're all decked out with all sorts of things. Either they're gonna have e bunnies and eggs and trees and everything and that, that's the danger when you start to add something. So tariqah tries its best is don't add anything. Don't do reiki, don't do all these different things because if you come back and email that now you're possessed and this is happening and what happened and you know the da'urah didn't work for me and we give many examples before. Somebody said the awrad is not working, two years later they say, the, oh by the way Shaykh I'm doing reiki. But you can't call on these, these Hindu spirits and, and, and idol worshippers because those are backgrounds of, of idolatry and you can't mix that into the tariqah teachings. Because just the spiritual beings of these two will fight because they're completely different. You know those whom believe in the oneness of Allah they're not going to sit there, those jinn that are in the oneness of Allah and mu'min and believers, they're not going to sit there with the, the idolaters and all that craziness, they're going to fight them. Then your house is going to be upside down and continuously in, in immense torment and difficulties because they're all fighting. So we keep with the way of Allah and keep away from these, these doors of difficulty for one of them should open and we don't know how to get rid of the difficulty. And you lose the favour of Prophet that when we don't adhere to what Prophet brought of his sharia, his laws and his rules then we lose that love and the nearness because Prophet doesn't want to be insulted and, and what he brought on this earth. We try our best to keep within that confines and to, to, to magnify its immense reality and its immense secret inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you please help us understand the difference between Shaykh al Tarbiya, Shaykh al Sohba, Shaykh al Taskiyah, and if one should consider approaching more than one Shaykh? Yeah we have the articles on, online, that's like a whole article, <laughs> yeah, yeah that uh, best is just to find your shaykh, sit down, try to master their knowledge and their connection and leave everything else. Because right now in the middle of a storm if you start to pick up and find this one, that one and, and you become bitarbiyat. You know we have a word like a attack type of person, means they have no tarbiyah and that's a danger, that's a danger when you, you start. Because who are you to judge what the shaykh's station is? Because now you're playing judgment so you're creating a hidden shirk. If you're sitting with somebody just doing zikr that's not a shaykh so you, you, you still need a shaykh and a guide. So that person does zikr that's okay but that's not a shaykh. So when you connect onto a channel and connect through the internet and you understand that this is a shaykh, this is a ijazah shaykh, he has ijazah, 
then take his teaching and that's it. You don't look left, don't look right, don't be in the business of you know the underwear inspectors. Is that they have uh, underwear and says, this one is inspected by number 12, this is inspected by number 8. So who's, who ever inspected that? Means it's not anyone's right to try to inspect the shaykh on who he is, what his station is. It's you have to understand the knowledge that the shaykh has, did you master it? If you mastered his two talks and say, okay I got it, now what? And there's no more talks, there's no more books, there's no more knowledges, then go out and seek more knowledge. But when they have oceans of knowledges and, and realities then it's your duty now to master those realities and stay away from trying to, to judge them. Those we gave in the talks of Surat Al-Kahf that uh, it wasn't Sayyidina Musa trying to judge Sayyidina Khidr because he came for tarbiyah, he came to follow. So when Allah inspires a servant and they find the channel, they find the teaching, they find like a buffet of teachings so that to see which one are you interested in, you take it, adhere to it, master it, master your connection. At that time you'll be guided, brought up into the heart of the shaykh, his shaykhs to the presence of Prophet So that's all that, that's necessary. And in these dark days when people begin to move around then what happens is they become disconnected and in the middle of a storm when you're disconnected then it's only difficulty. So keep away from the, the bad characteristics of, of trying to sort of qualify shaykhs and who they are, what, what is their station inshaAllah. If the knowledge is there and you feel that your heart is like a magnet drawn to that knowledge and drawn to that way, somebody sits with a shaykh that has a different type of characteristic. And they have to pay attention to their heart and say, the heart, say, I don't feel any attraction. I don't feel attraction to the way they teach or even what they're teaching or no teaching. Then you have to keep going, you have to be a seeker on the path until one day your heart like a magnet tells you, oh I got it, that this one is talking from what Allah put in my heart, I'm drawn to it. Then you take your allegiance and go. You can't be drawn for one week and then undraw because now the talks got harder. So once you found that attraction from your heart you draw into it, lock yourself into it and adhere to it. And then not to sit there judging and every day changing the mind of the servant but adhere to the reality inshaAllah. And if you're not drawn to it, next page. Some people may come and say, I'm not drawn to any of these things, I just want to sit in a fiqr class. But then definitely don't sit here because it's not going to be like that. Go to find your fiqh class if that's what your heart is drawn to. And once you stay there, sit there, learn everything that you're supposed to learn and accomplish what Allah wants you to accomplish inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there a spiritual reality to barometric pressure, precipitation changes? Is it negative and positive energy fighting? Hmm. I, I can't say no because I don't <laughs> understand that. But, but I don't know about barometric pressure and if you're a newscaster on the weather channel. But I could tell you that anytime the weather is changing, it most definitely is spiritual beings in the air. So not, nothing is happening by itself. Allah even draws our attention to the, the winding winds, so the movement of the wind are spiritual beings moving and uh, these spiritual beings have certain paths and caravans all year round. The tornadoes and the cycles of tornadoes they don't change, they're always like on a caravan going around the earth. There's certain months where the typhoons and, and hurricanes and all these things are happening, these are spiritual beings, their movement. And on, on special occasions and holy nights there may be many storms, wind storms, many different clouds, many different rains because these spiritual beings come in with an immense amount of energy. And anytime you bring an enormous amount of energy into the atmosphere of course it's going to change. You're going to have wind, you're going to all of a sudden you may have hail because of the electricity that they bring and the energies they bring. So definitely everything has a has an effect 
energy has an effect on everything. So specific to the biometric machine I'm not familiar but we know that uh, the spiritual beings have a tremendous effect on, on the weather all around us, the atmosphere and the energy and, and everything to do with that, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi As Does each day of the week have its own reality? Do different days open different doors? Yeah, of course, definitely. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Every day of the week has a reality. Every day of the week is dressed by the huruf, right? So the first day of the month is dressed by alif. So all the way to the last day is dressed by the ya. So then every day has a reality of a huruf, the reality of the huruf for that day. And the first 15 days are what we call the days of light in which the birth of the moon and the birthing light is coming out until you get to the three days of the full moon in which the moon becomes full, maximum amount of energy coming out and why Prophet recommended that you fast those white nights. And there's also we described in many talks there's a maqam in which there's a, a soul of a wali who's in charge of those fasting. So that, that wali and that reality is then dressed upon those whom fast those days so that they'll be dressed and an immense amount of nur will be given to them. And then the, the last 14-15 days then is the descent of the month in which the light is moving away and going towards what they call the darker nights, the darker energy. So the, there's a, a reality for everything. Every day has a dress and every day of the week has a reality from the seven verses of Surat Al-Fatiha. And we have that in the talk for the tafsir of Surat Al-Fatiha that uh, Yawmul Ahad is, is, is the day in which to start everything, right? which is the Sunday. Sunday is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So you start everything that you want to do on the Yawmul Ahad and that you started with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And that has the secret of Surat Al-Fatiha until the Yawm Al-Sabt, the seventh day which is Saturday. So then Surat Al-Fatiha is dressing and the seven verses including Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem dress the week. So depending upon the week that's why we fast certain days of the week, you cut your nails certain days of the week and the, the dress of the week. I think we, we made the conference between Surah Fatiha and the days of the week in, in, the, in a different subat. So then you look to Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and then you look Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is then what? Monday. So and if you took the tafsir Surah Fatiha that all of Qur'an are in each of the verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. So on the day of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Every verse of Qur'an that has to do with hamd and praising, its fountain is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So then Monday immensely powerful because that's the day of hamd. So Prophet prescribed for us fast Monday so that you can be dressed from the secrets of hamd and the secrets of hamd in Surat Al-Fatiha. So, Yes, every day has a secret inshaAllah. Everything has a secret, everything has a light. Allah created every light with a secret and every secret that has a light. And every day has a light and every day has a secret within its light. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamu ala mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan.
to many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.